Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 News Updates and tonight we talk matters health. We're going to be talking about cervical cancer treatment and management. We seek to understand what really uh, is the HPV which is the human papilloma virus all about. We try to look at the risk factors of cervical cancer. We try to look at treatment uh, screening. That is how often as a woman should you go for screening for cervical cancer. We're also, not, uh, also going to talk about getting checked uh, for other cancer uh, diseases that are there. To help us talk about this topic tonight, we have Benda and, sorry, Benda and Kidaka, who is a co-founder for Women for Cancer. She's going to be um, talking about uh, everything about cervical cancer tonight. So please, if you want to be part of this conversation, share your views and comments on all our social media platforms. That is on Y254 channel, and you can also reach me at Patricia Moriuki. As we start off the Broadcast, I'd like us to start off with some stat uh, statistics. Where globally, cervical cancer rank ranks fourth in both e incidents and cancer related deaths among its women, with an estimated of 569,847 new cases and 311,365 deaths annually. It accounts for 13.1% of all new female cancers globally. In Eastern Africa alone, we have cervical cancer remains the most common cancer in women with estimated age standardized incidence and mortality rates of 40.1 and 30.1 per hundred thousand respectively and then in Kenya we have currently Kenya is ranked uh, is ranked to top 20 countries with the highest rates of cervical cancer in women of reproductive age the country also has the highest number of cancer related deaths across East Africa with cervical cancer accounting for 3286 deaths annually which is a very sad story but today we are talking about a cancer we are talking about cervical cancer which is a disease that can be pre uh, it can be prevented and it can also be treated so um, Benda thank you very much for finding the time to join us on Y254. I'm sure this is a topic that is going to inform and educate a lot of young girls and also young men watching tonight. So thank you very much. Thank Welcome. You. As we start off, I would like first to, to ask you, what inspired you to start or to be an advocate for uh, cancer and why did you start the Women for Cancer? So um, that's an interesting question you should ask me. Each one of us sometimes is faced with a life-changing decision mm -hmm. and when that happens then you have to decide what you want to do with that okay for me in 2010 i was in corporate kenya i was working in corporate marketing and being a communication person at that time i was faced with the decision where my younger sister was going through a cancer diagnosis and it was in cancer mm -hmm. it was pre-cancer of the cervix. Okay. I knew very little about cervical cancer, let alone pre-cancer. Mm -hmm. And at that time I knew if I don't know, and I'm fairly well educated, and I'm working in corporate Kenya, and I don't know, how many women out there don't know? So that's where my journey started. Mm -hmm. Since then I met uh, women who are equally as passionate in different fields. And we got to talking and decided that this is the one cancer that we can do something about. Okay. When we started, uh, there were 2,500 cases of cervical cancer annually and about 1,500 dying every year. Mm -hmm. By today, we're talking about the 5,200 yes. women mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. discovered early and another 3,000 dying, 3,286. And so in our advocacy work, one of the things that we've categorically called on women to do is go get screened early mm -hmm. and also policy advocacy mm -hmm. to ensure that we can get the preventative measures as early as possible mm -hmm. so that we can prevent this disease that's preventable. Mm -hmm. And my inspiration is knowing since when we started when many women were not going out and that's why the numbers were so low mm -hmm. that we have more women coming out now. Mm -hmm. We also have the vaccine that was launched and therefore we know we are on the right path towards early detection and towards prevention for our girls. Okay. Yes. Uh, I've heard you, you've actually mentioned that if probably did not happen to your younger sister, you would not have the interest to want to know what cervical cancer was all about. Not really. So for people yeah. watching us tonight, yes. would you tell us what is cervical cancer? Cervical cancer is a disease that affects women because women have cervixes, mm -hmm. okay? It's a disease that affects the opening of the uh, uterus which is the door to the womb. Mm -hmm. And the cervix, being as women are the ones who have cervi uh, the cervix, mm -hmm. it's, um, 
sort of it affects women and takes a period of time, a disease that develops over a period of time, mm -hmm. caused by a virus called HPV, mm -hmm. human papilloma virus, yes. which is caused by persistent infection mm -hmm. with the high risk HPV. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds like a lot of technical jargon, but if I can simplify it, Human papilloma virus has been found to be the cause of cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Cervical cancer takes time, 5 to 20 years, mm -hmm. before it develops. We have pre-stages of the cancer, which is called the pre-cancer, mm -hmm. where the cells are changing mm -hmm. with continuous uh, persistent infection of the human papilloma virus. And in that period, if caught early, it is treatable. Mm -hmm. So when, when somebody asks me what is cervical cancer, I like to say it's the one cancer that gives us time to act. Okay. Uh, before we talk about the HPV, that is a human papilloma virus, I would mm. like us to talk about what are the risk factors? Because when you talk about the causes, we know the cause, the cause is HPV. Mm -hmm. But what are the risk factors for, for cervical cancer? Okay. And the very first risk factor is that you're a woman. Mm -hmm. If you're a woman, chances are you will get cervical cancer by virtue of having a cervix. Mm -hmm. The second one is persistent infection with HPV, mm -hmm. high risk. Mm -hmm. If I can explain that a little bit. Mm -hmm. HPV, human papilloma virus, mm -hmm. there are so many strains mm -hmm. of 150 different types of uh, HPV mm -hmm. to have been proven to be the risk factors for cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. That's strain 16, in 18. Okay. I didn't know that mm -hmm. before I got into this field. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it is so common, anyone who has had any intercourse has caught it at one point or another. Mm -hmm. And if you have caught HPV and you don't know which one it is, 16 or 18, mm -hmm. therefore we can't tell who is at risk or mm -hmm. who is at not mm -hmm. at risk. And that's why we say screening is imperative okay. so that we can be able to catch early mm -hmm. before it develops into cervical mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. And there are even modalities now of knowing mm -hmm. which HPV type it is. Mm -hmm. Between 100 and 1 to 150, mm -hmm. 16 and 18 being the ones that cause cervical cancer, mm -hmm. we are able to tell. Mm -hmm. The other risk factor is multiple sexual partners. Mm -hmm. HPV is sexually transmitted. The more the number of partners, the higher the chances that someone is picking as many from out there. Mm -hmm. And this is not just about women. This is also relating to men. When men have multiple sexual partners and then they bring them back, because once they have engaged with someone, yeah. chances are they'll bring that virus mm -hmm. back home. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's also prevalent on both men and mm -hmm. women. And so multiple sexual partners mm -hmm. is yet another. Mm -hmm. And the age of sexual debut, mm -hmm. the younger the girl, the more at risk she is of developing cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Because then there will be more HPV in the system for a longer period of time. Okay. And the body also, the mechanism for fighting for itself. Mm -hmm. Which is why we say if we want to stop cervical cancer, we then need to be aware that we First of all, um, keep to faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Secondly, get screened so that we know as early as possible mm -hmm. when the ch cell changes are happening. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, as a woman, just be self-aware. Okay. Because as a woman, you're at a risk of cervical cancer. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you think there's enough uh, awareness uh, on the vaccine? Because the HPV uh, uh, vaccine is, can only be administered, administered to maybe girls of the age of 10. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you think we have enough awareness? Does uh, a mother today in Trukana, in the rural areas of this country, know that there is a vaccine for cervical cancer? Do they know that? So it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. The vaccine was introduced in Kenya in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, October. Mm -hmm. And before then, we had engaged in various campaigns together with the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. and other partners mm -hmm. to be able to educate communities around HPV vaccination mm -hmm. and cervical cancer prevention. Mm -hmm. The key messages to get out there is that HPV vaccine is safe mm -hmm. and it's also effective mm -hmm. and has been tested and tried across the globe with over 115 countries mm -hmm. having started HPV vaccination programs, mm -hmm. it is proven to prevent cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we are introducing it, mm -hmm. now that it is locally available at all health facilities countrywide, mm -hmm. women ought to take their daughters, mm -hmm. men ought to take their daughters who are eligible. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, 
for public health reasons, the vaccine is being given to 10-year-old girls. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mothers of 10-year-old girls and fathers of 10-year-old girls and caregivers, children who live with their grandmothers or live with their other relatives, mm -hmm. they ought to be taken for this vaccine. Okay. It's free of charge. Mm -hmm. Nobody's someone been charged ask, for it. Yes. Why, why is it that maybe someone is 16 or 18 or 20, if all we are talking about is there is something here that can help us counter-attack this disease, why can't this vaccine be administered to a, a, a young lady who is 18 or 19 or 20? Okay, so globally, mm -hmm. and this is good information for people to know out there, mm -hmm. globally the vaccine is available for girls ages 9 to 14 mm -hmm. and uh, ages so two doses mm -hmm. and ages 15 to 26 they mm -hmm. can get what is known as a booster vaccine mm -hmm. three doses okay. globally mm -hmm. in Kenya we are administering to ages 10 because that's the routine immunization program no. okay. with the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. if a mother out there wants to protect their daughter mm -hmm. who is older and they're able to pay for this vaccine. They mm -hmm. will not be able to access it for free oh, because there okay. is public planning mm -hmm. which 800 vaccine doses have been provided for, mm -hmm. for the 10-year-old girls. Mm -hmm. But if a parent is able to do so for their uh, children mm -hmm. who is older, who is older mm -hmm. and they, they ought to, mm -hmm. at the age of 14 to 18, mm -hmm. if a girl has not been introduced, uh, to 26, if a girl has not been introduced to HPV, mm -hmm. they ought to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But because the government is not providing for that right now, then somebody would need to pay for it. Okay. So it is safe and effective. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I would like us to talk about a screening. Yes. That is uh, where to be screened. We get to talk about how our systems really promoting screening because I understand, I think sometimes you need to show up to, uh, in an hospital and I have no idea that screening can help you and a nurse or a medical practitioner is gonna encourage you to do so and also how often should screening be done? Okay, so you raised some good points mm -hmm. and I'll start with where is, it, where is the screening being done? Mm -hmm. According to the Ministry of Health, all public health facilities ought to have uh, screening for women okay. who are eligible. Mm -hmm. The ages that are being uh, advocated for is ages 25 mm -hmm. through to 49. Okay. This is available in facilities. Mm -hmm. But you see, we wouldn't know if this service is being delivered if women don't demand for it. Okay. So from a, a health advocate perspective, mm -hmm. my sense is women need to be demanding for these services mm -hmm. because our government should be providing this service mm -hmm. to the woman mm -hmm. for the health of the population. Okay. okay. The government has gone ahead and launched last year the screening guidelines. Mm -hmm which standardize service across the country. Mm -hmm. They have also rolled it out, mm -hmm. the screening guidelines, across the country. And therefore, if facilities at the county level are not giving this service, it's because they're failing the communities, okay? okay? So, for us, to make it easier for our women to be screened, mm -hmm. it's the woman to present themselves and then get screened. Mm -hmm. And if the service is not available, mm -hmm. let them then ask for that service. Okay. The healthcare worker could come in and also give that service, mm -hmm. but you, you and I know our healthcare system is quite stretched. Mm -hmm. Between dealing with non-communicable diseases, diabetes, hypertension, uh, um, BMI, mm -hmm. weight, uh, having to deal with cancer, and it's not just cervical cancer, dealing with communicable diseases, malaria, we have a TB, Too we bad. have, so when, when the healthcare system is that strained and stretched, and we don't have as many healthcare workers as can be, mm -hmm. the challenge is that the healthcare worker is dealing with the issue at hand, mm -hmm. not necessarily recommending mm -hmm. the service that could prevent. So there is a need for that paradigm shift mm -hmm. for our healthcare system also to start recommending preventative health. Mm -hmm. But again, power to the people, we keep saying the youth are the future of yeah. this country. Mm -hmm. We forget the future is now. And the future of health mm -hmm. is protecting who is healthy mm -hmm. to remain healthier. Okay. And preventing that which is preventable mm -hmm. for girls mm -hmm. and young men mm -hmm. to remain healthy. And for that to happen, we cannot wait 10 years from now to start telling them go get screened. Mm -hmm. We need to sensitize now to start demanding for that service if they are eligible.
Okay. Yes. I would like to take something out here. Yes. As, as, as is the case in many low and middle income countries, most women are diagnosed in very advanced stages of the disease when treatment options are limited yes. and it is very costly to treat. As yes. a result, women in Kenya are 14 times more likely to die from cervical cancer than women in the United States. Yes. We've talked about screening. I will work in a facility. A woman is going to work in, uh, in a facility, get screened, uh, probably they have, because I understand there's primary, secondary, and then the tertiary, uh, that, that is a stage of cervical cancer. When this woman now knows that I have cervical cancer, probably they have no finances. You find out maybe we don't have uh, equipment. Uh, whatever that is there, it's very expensive for these people to afford. What do you think the Ministry of Health and the stakeholders can do to make sure that even as we talk about and preach about the early screening and getting screened probably annually and all that, we are not just pushing women to go and get screened and then when they know what, what uh, they have a problem, we cannot solve it or they cannot be able to solve it. Um, I'll take you back to 2010 mm -hmm. when my sister was told she had cervical cancer mm -hmm. and it was in cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. It was pre-cancer. Mm -hmm. At that time, we were asking the same questions. Mm -hmm. What if the cost of treatment is so high? Mm -hmm. What if the chances of recovery are minimized? What if, what if, what if? Mm -hmm. We can never know until we've gone to the system. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I have seen in this field is that technologies are evolving. Mm -hmm. Right now we have technologies to even screen for HPV. Mm -hmm risk type okay okay mm -hmm. we're able to say you have hpv high risk and therefore you need to be observed further mm -hmm. so that we can be able to diagnose okay. way before the disease has kicked in we're able to tell the cervix is changing but right now we can treat it and the interventions are so cheap mm -hmm. with 2500 shillings in the doctor's office mm -hmm. those cells can be dealt with okay. and they can be eliminated mm -hmm. and in three months mm -hmm. the woman has retained their fertility mm -hmm. through a technology called thermal ablation mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. where the cells are burnt off and then clinically mm -hmm. and then in three months the cells have regenerated but the cancerous cell the precancerous cells have fallen off mm -hmm. for this to happen women need to embrace that element of it's treatable if discovered early mm -hmm. often with very minimal invasiveness and with very little cost okay. the misconception that treatment of cancer has to always be expensive is what is killing our people mm -hmm. because then they are afraid to go mm -hmm. because they are afraid of the cost yes. they are afraid of what will it turn out to be mm -hmm. yet majority could have been prevented Mm -hmm. if they were discovered early. Okay. Secondly, we have NHIF mm -hmm. and it covers some of these procedures mm -hmm. if only women presented early. Mm -hmm. But somebody has to take charge and go mm -hmm. and get screened. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've seen often when we go to medical outreaches and we tell someone we are seeing something changing, mm -hmm. there is always the fear. But the moment we say these cell changes are such that we can arrest it early, you mm -hmm. will be treated. Mm -hmm. The smile that comes on is that the woman is confident, I am glad I came earlier okay. because now we can deal with this. Mm -hmm. We can't guarantee five years later if they had waited, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be invasive cancer. Mm -hmm. And so to go back to your question, mm -hmm. we find our women are found so late yeah. when the cost of treatment is high mm -hmm. and they chances of recovery is very minimized. Mm -hmm. It's because in Kenya and in African countries, regrettably, we don't follow the screening guidelines. Mm -hmm. We don't have our women demanding for this service. Okay. And our healthcare system does not call on them to go as early as possible. Mm -hmm. In the US, they are screened routinely. Mm -hmm. And the standard is every five years, mm -hmm. somebody is screened if they go through um, HPV screening, mm -hmm. or if they do a pap smear, mm -hmm. or if they do a visual inspection, mm -hmm. every five years a woman should be screened. Mm -hmm. If something is found, they ought to be navigated to be treated, okay. referred to be treated. Mm -hmm. If nothing is found, there ought to be a follow-up mechanism mm -hmm. that five years later, they're reminded to come for the second one. Okay. And that's what we're working towards. Okay, I hope, I hope you are going to manage to get there as a oh, country. Yes. So let's talk about uh, treatment and management. So how now do we treat uh, what is the process of the treatment of cervical cancer? Before we can talk about treatment of cervical cancer, mm -hmm. because I'm hoping your viewership mm -hmm. would be people who are at this point in time looking at preventative yes. and people who would be looking at what do I need to do mm -hmm. next. Mm -hmm. I want to say this. Mm -hmm. One, girls and women should not wait for signs and symptoms. Okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. They should not wait for, I want my body to tell me, go get checked. Mm -hmm. They should take it upon themselves. We should all take mm -hmm. it upon ourselves mm -hmm. to go get screened as early as possible. Okay. And the rule of the thumb is, if you have been introduced to intercourse at the age of 21, for example, mm -hmm. or 24, for example, mm -hmm. count three years mm -hmm. after which mm -hmm. you ought to go for your first screening. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Okay. Don't wait until you're 35, 40, mm -hmm. 45. Mm -hmm. Go get screened. It's a 15 minutes affair mm -hmm. in the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. It will take you five minutes to undress. And I keep saying this and people think I'm joking. Mm -hmm. Five minutes to undress, five minutes to get dressed after, mm -hmm. five minutes to Put be checked. Mm -hmm. And in that five minutes could determine the rest of your life yeah. if you're found early. Mm -hmm. Okay? Secondly, for those who are a bit advanced in age and mm -hmm. probably are seeing signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. what to look out for? We see women presenting with abnormal bleeding, mm -hmm. either in between periods mm -hmm. or heavier bleeding than normal, mm -hmm. or women who have already reached menopause and they are bleeding. Okay. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. Go get checked. Mm -hmm. For women who get a discharge, we all know our bodies clean themselves mm -hmm. and there is a discharge. Yeah. That's why we even wear these uh, liners. Yes. But for a discharge that's abnormal mm -hmm. and that's smelly, mm -hmm. that you can feel flowing, mm -hmm. they ought to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. But remember I said, there are no signs and symptoms when it's early disease. So they should not wait for these signs and symptoms. Okay. Lower back pain, again, um, severe lower back pain or lower abdominal pain, mm -hmm. again, it's your body screaming and saying something is not right, don't wait for it. Okay. Go get checked. Why I said I don't want to concentrate so much on the treatment mm -hmm. is because we cannot be able to cover the length of treatment options mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But I can mention this, at early pre-cancer stages, mm -hmm. we have what is known as see and treat. Mm -hmm. We see the cells as they are changing, they are treated, through cryotherapy mm -hmm. or um, cryotherapy or thermoablation, mm -hmm. and in three months the cells have fallen off, okay. and in six months we can test again and we see mm -hmm. that there is nothing going on. Mm -hmm. There is brachytherapy, mm -hmm. which is introducing radiotherapy through the canal, mm -hmm. the birth canal, mm -hmm. and again this is targeted treatment for in, treatment for invasive cancer. Mm -hmm. There is chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Yes. And there is also what we call hysterectomy, mm -hmm. when the cells have started changing, but it has not gone invasive uh, around the other areas, mm -hmm. and therefore we can surgically remove the diseased part. Okay. Why I'm saying go back to screening mm -hmm. is because we need not wait for this. Mm -hmm. By the time we are seeing signs and symptoms, we are seeing invasive disease, mm -hmm. when we could have stopped it way before it started mm -hmm. at pre-cancer level. Okay. And when we could have stopped it for the young girl mm -hmm. at the vaccination level, mm -hmm. when the body is building its own immunity. Mm -hmm. It's important we focus on prevention for cervical cancer mm -hmm. as opposed to so much of treatment. Okay. Yes. Uh, Actually, we're running out of time, but what do you think is the role of the society? What is the role of, uh, what, what now can the society come and do and contribute in making sure that as we fight the, um, as we fight cervical cancer, we not only get to fight it for people who are, who are either infected or affected, even for someone probably who have not had a relative who has had cervical cancer, but they can understand that we are doing this together to fight these menace. So with cancer, the first part of call is awareness. Mm -hmm. As a community, we need to be aware mm -hmm. that cancer is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? And therefore, the stigma that a, a, a accompanies a cancer diagnosis, the fear that accompanies and the mention of the word cancer, we need to demystify that. Mm -hmm. We need to demystify that all cancers kill. Mm -hmm. No. We need to talk about prevention. Mm -hmm. Some cancers are preventable. Uh, cervical cancer is one of them. Mm -hmm. It has a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Okay, liver cancer is also vaccinatable. Mm -hmm. Okay, people don't know this. Yeah. Hepatitis B mm -hmm. is a vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, HPV vaccine mm -hmm. is a vaccine to prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. People need to be aware of this. Mm -hmm. Screening for early detection mm -hmm. when we can downstage the disease and mm -hmm. get it treated earlier more effectively, mm -hmm. it's important. Okay. Then we go to treatment, mm -hmm. okay? okay? And again, different treatment for different stages of cancer, mm -hmm. which often can result to better quality of life mm -hmm. or even better treatment options, and mm -hmm. sometimes 100% cure. Mm -hmm. People need to take charge. And it's not just about the woman 
the man in recommending that the woman gets screened, mm -hmm. the man in having fewer, mm -hmm. no, actually remaining faithful, mm -hmm. the man recommending the vaccine the to mm -hmm. their daughter, mm -hmm. the community, the mm -hmm. church community, talking about it mm -hmm. at the pulpit, mm -hmm. talking about prevention, the community itself attending public health uh, facilities mm -hmm. and also attending community awareness and education mm -hmm. so that we can know how to beat cancer mm -hmm. early. Each one of us has a role to play. Mm -hmm. And for the younger generation, you're the ones who can guarantee us a cancer-free society, okay. a cervical cancer-free society. Mm -hmm. You are healthy and you have the mechanism to prevent for yourselves. Mm -hmm. Help th make this job easier. Okay. By preventing. Okay. Yes. As we close, uh, as we close up, uh, maybe you could share platforms for the if you have social media platforms for the Women for Cancer, just in case someone has watched us tonight and they would like to know more about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I will uh, at at Women for Cancer, mm -hmm. women and then digit four mm -hmm. cancer mm -hmm. at Women for Cancer okay. at Benda K two mm -hmm. at Kenco Network. Mm -hmm. That's the larger network of cancer organizations. Mm -hmm. All these are on my social handle, and I can be able to do so. Let's keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. Let's prevent cervical cancer. It's doable. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Brenda, Thank you for, for having the me. time to talk about it. I'm sure people have learned something because uh, honestly, I have learned something I take home today Thank and you. I'll make sure that my friends and my siblings also understand that. So if you've watched us tonight, you're a young lady, you're a young man, you're a father, you're a mother, make sure that if you're a father, May you motivate your uh, daughters, your partner, to go and get screened. If you're a young girl, you should not wait any longer, as you've heard from Ben. Don't wait to be 35. Just do it now for you to be able to secure your future. That is all we end for you tonight on Y254 News. My name is Patricia Moriuki. Do have yourselves a very good night.